Y'all may, may be seated. Good afternoon, and a warm welcome to the inauguration of Dr. George J. Haggerty as the third president of Beacon College. I am Robert Bridgman, the executive vice president of Beacon College, and I am honored to serve this afternoon as the master of ceremonies for this event. The Beacon community considers it the utmost privilege to host the first inaugural ceremony in the college's history. The installation of our new president is noteworthy as well as it serves as the first public event in the celebration of yet another milestone, the 25th anniversary of the founding of Beacon College. It is now my privilege to call upon John W. Harrington, the senior pastor of the United Methodist Church of Leesburg to offer the invocation. Let us begin with a moment of silent prayer. 
out of concern for student leader Brian Kaminsky, a member of the class of 2014 who is very seriously ill. Gracious Sovereign, ground of our being and source of our giftedness, illumine the path of your servant Brian during this difficult part of his life pilgrimage. Give him grace to sense your presence near and to feel the affection of his Beacon College family. And now, we invoke your presence among us here gathered for this auspicious occasion. Bless Beacon College. Bless Beacon's students, Beacon's trustees, Beacon's faculty and staff, Beacon's alumni and friends, and most of all, Beacon's new president. Give all eyes to see the incredible potential of each one of your children and a powerful vision of how this college will change this country. Guide and energize Dr. Haggerty as he leads Beacon College to new heights of excellence, as he serves this college, this community, and all anywhere who are inspired by achievement arising out of adversity. We will give you the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Harrington. Joining the college's board of trustees, our honored speakers, and President Haggerty, are two individuals whose talents and leadership allowed the dreams and ambitions of Beacon College to become a reality. These are Dr. Haggerty's predecessors. I now ask that Dr. Marcia Glines and President Emeritus Deborah Broadback to please rise and be acknowledged by this gathering. The Beacon community is justifiably proud to welcome parents, friends, and admirers of the college and our unique mission in the annals of American higher education to focus exclusively at the undergraduate level on students with learning differences, ADHD, and associated learning differences. Even for our relative youth of 25 years, Beacon College possesses a legacy of student outcomes unapproached by the contemporary higher education community. It is now my privilege to introduce the Leesburg High School Concert Chorus under the direction of Ms. Carol Elton, Choral Director. Please rise as the chorus leads us in America the Beautiful. Oh. 
You may be seated. Thank you, Ms. Elton and the members of the Leesburg High School Concert Chorus. Over the course of the past two and a half years, Beacon College has been fortunate to be led by Mrs. Eileen Maranakis as a chair of the college's board of trustees. It is my honor to introduce Mrs. Maranakis to offer her greetings and those of the Beacon College Board of Trustees. Mrs. Maranakis. President Haggerty, members of the Board of Trustees, and friends of Beacon College, I speak to you proudly as the chair of the Board of Trustees, the fiduciaries of Beacon College. For this momentous occasion, we are privileged to have our entire community in attendance, including our students and many of their parents, representing 36 states and six countries. This is a remarkable uh, achievement. Beacon College has come so very far since our founding 25 years ago when a small, determined, and visionary group of parents set out to provide a post-secondary higher education experience for their sons and daughters. The college was established and enrollment hovered at 12 students. The collegiate venture was innovative, even experimental, and so very small. Could an undergraduate community devoted to the learning aspirations of students with learning disabilities and their families survive and thrive? The answer is a resounding yes. Beacon College is the first and foremost institution of its type. Since our founding in 1989, we remain wholly dedicated to providing a rigorous undergraduate preparation to young men and women who embrace a diagnosed learning disability for what it is, a call to achieve while learning differently. Our students today are young men and women who, like the Beacon graduates who have preceded them, apply their talents and individualized style and pace of learning to pursue and master a demanding college-level curriculum. Over 25 years, the community has worked tirelessly and continuously to ensure that the ambitions of our students and their families and the evolving demands and expectations of America's social and economic fabric are realized and exceeded. We are understandably proud and honored to be an important part of the city of Leesburg. The consequential result of a gracious invitation extended by the elected officials of this community to establish this institution in the city's downtown. Our collegial and cooperative relationship with the leaders, businesses, and citizens of Leesburg today is the legacy of the vision and generosity that defined this offer at the early and less certain time of our founding. We now proudly educate 186 baccalaureate learners in the essential undergraduate disciplines of business, psychology, human services, computer information systems, interdisciplinary studies, and studio arts. Beacon College additionally offers minors in several areas of study and yet our curricular offerings continue to strengthen and grow. That which has driven us in the past and continues to motivate us in our, is our collective commitment to the outstanding students whom we are privileged to serve. It is anticipated that 220 undergraduates will be matriculated for the fall 2014 semester. For the members of the Board of Trustees, Beacon College is a truly spiritual quest. We enthusiastically welcome you to join us in pursuing this most worthy of causes. Your participation today in this inaugural ceremony is a statement of your belief in the mission of Beacon College and your confidence in the capabilities of our new president, Dr. George J. Haggerty. We thank you for joining us today and for your expressed confidence and growing friendship. I assure you that the impact of your involvement, along with President Haggerty, the Board of Trustees, and the entire Beacon College community, 
will propel this institution to ever new heights. In so doing, we will expand the opportunities available to our remarkable students so that they might realize the promise captured in the college's motto and thus deservedly live a life abundant in all its rich possibilities and dimensions. Welcome to Beacon College. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Honorable Daniel A. Webster is now serving his second term as a member of the United States Congress. By the good fortune of location, Beacon College and the city of Leesburg have the privilege to reside in Florida's 10th Congressional District and are represented by Congressman Webster. In over 30 years of public service, Daniel Webster has assumed essential leadership roles during times of significant governmental reform, including his tenure as Speaker of Florida's House of Representatives and Majority Leader of the Florida Senate. It is my privilege to introduce the Honorable Daniel A. Webster. Well, what a privilege it is to be here today. I, I can't tell you how much I love Beacon College. Uh, so to the leadership there and, and the faculty and other honored guests and, and members of the student body, uh, not only welcome, but congratulations. This institution is different. It's unique. And it fulfills a need that's been uh, maybe short in being filled, but now it's here and it does, it does a fantastic job. Because, you know what? Vegan College offers hope. Some lady asked me the other day at a forum, is there any hope? My answer is yes, there's always hope. There's always hope when there's somebody that's meeting the need of that hope. This college does that, but it, you know what? Hope is not the end. You can hope all you want, but if there's not reality that hope, it's not that good. This college not only offers hope, but it brings reality to that hope, fulfills dreams. I was just talking to a young man here, a graduate, a businessman for the last eight years, a successful businessman who had no hope until he got to this college. So the, the college not only gave him hope, but he, it also brought reality to that hope. You know what, Dr. Haggerty, he has the, uh, certainly the educational credentials to be president here, but others do too. And he certainly has the educational experience to run this college. But there are probably others that do. But you know what? This is a perfect match because Dr. Haggerty has one thing that others don't. He has a heart for this institution and for the people that are here. When you couple that with the knowledge of how to run an institution and the educational qualifications to be the president of that institution, you have the perfect match. I don't know if matches are made in heaven for college presidents. I don't know if that's true or not. But this one is close. I think it is a perfect match between a man who not only has been a success in education, but also has a heart and soul that focuses on the student body and the needs of this particular student body. And so for that, not only congratulations to Dr. Haggerty for being name the president of this fine institution, but congratulations to this institution for finding someone as unique as Dr. Haggerty. So thank you so much for letting me come. May God bless you and God bless this fine institution. Thank you, Congressman Webster. The Honorable John Christian was elected to serve as the mayor of the city of Leesburg in January of this year. His record of public service in local and regional manners is significant and has earned him re-election to the position on the Leesburg City Council. Beacon College is justifiably proud of its home in the city of Leesburg, and so it is my honor to introduce Mayor John Christian to offer words of greeting on behalf of the people of Leesburg.
Good afternoon to everyone and to the Board of Trustees and welcome Dr. Haggerty and your family, to the students, professors, and the parents of those six countries and 30 plus states who now know about Leesburg, Florida. I'm excited about Beacon College because they have come and helped transform our downtown and our city to heights untold. I'm excited about Beacon College because you are unique. You serve a unique population. I'm also a pastor in the city of Leesburg and several of the students of Beacon College visit our church. Um, so we're excited about Beacon College bringing new people to our city. So on behalf of the city commission and one of the city commissioners serves as on the board of trustees, Commissioner David Knowles and the citizens of Leesburg, we are excited about Beacon College. I think I heard um, someone say this is the first um, coming out inaugural celebration um, and Beacon College, you do it big and you do it well and, and we're excited and everything you have done has been done with the spirit of excellence um, and, and I commend you on that because I think you're helping our city grow and become a, a first class city throughout everything that has been done throughout downtown. We've tried several attempts to revitalize our downtown and here comes Beacon College 25 years ago. Those determined parents, I graduated from high school 25 years ago, so I always remember 1989 as a historical moment and from Leesburg High School to graduate. So I'm excited about Beacon College and if the next 25 years is anything like the first 25 years, this is gonna be a grand institution. And I think you're not, you may be the first, but I think other people are gonna to try to copy what you've done because I think you've set the bar very high for higher education to a population that needed this service. So to the professors who educate these students, to the staff who work with these students, and to the parents who entrust your students to come to the greatest city in the United States of America, the city of Leesburg, we welcome you. Thank you, Beacon College, Dr. Harry, welcome to our city, God bless you. Thank you, Mary Christian. The Beaton College community is understandably grateful and proud that the Board of Trustees appointed Dr. George J. Haggerty as the third president of Beacon College. Our college is defined by its intimate and close-knitted nature. In keeping with the spirit and institutional identity of our college, it is my privilege to call upon three members of the Beacon family who bring, who bring greetings from the faculty and staff, the students, and Beacon's alumni. It is my honor to call to the stage Professor Terry Ross, Dr. Ross is our senior member of the faculty, Mr. Brett Daly, Brett is our, is our Student Government Association President, and Mr. Jeremy Levin, a graduate, a graduate of the class of 2006. I'm Dr. Terry Ross, and it's my privilege to be the senior member of the Beacon College faculty. It is my honor to have been invited to represent my colleagues on the faculty and staff to bring you the greetings of our very proud community. Please know how very meaningful it is for, the, for us to process in our academic regalia as a body of one, to celebrate the inauguration of Dr. Haggerty and the unmistakable vision and energy that he has brought to our college at a defining moment in our 25 year history. Our heartfelt and most enthusiastic congratulations to you, Dr. Haggerty, and to your family. Good afternoon. My name is Brett Daly, and I serve as the president of the Beacon College Student Government Association. The inauguration of President Haggerty is the first public event of its kind in the history of Beacon College. I speak for all of the college's students in saying that we are understandably proud to be part of this important celebration. In particular, we thank the Board of Trustees for selecting Dr. Haggerty to lead our institution. Congratulations, Dr. Haggerty. Being with you over the past several months has let us all know that you are the right person to lead our community. So thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Jeremy. 
I'm a proud graduate of class of 2006. I consider it's a great honor to speak on, beha on the behalf of the college alumni. Eaton College has been fortunate to have the right leaders of our special college at the right time. Dr. Harry, you should know that the selection of a new president was very important to all of us to receive representation, the rep representation of the life of Beacon. Although we are not all not all on, on campus daily, the word has certainly spread over the wires and we are great fit for Beacon College. And it, the vision of the energy you will take institution forward the new the new heights. From all the alumni, we, we welcome you and offer you our support and congratulate you as the events of the college that we love. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ross, Mr. Daly, and Mr. Levin. Allow me to again invite the Leesburg High School Concert Chorus to offer us the gift of music. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to move on down where you are to be. And when we find ourselves in a place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight. So by turning, turning, we come round, round. Thank you, Ms. Elton, and members of the chorus. It is a tradition at academic ceremonies such as this one that we celebrate today to invite an individual whose life, career, and perspective illuminate the values and ambitions of our learning community and the students that we serve. So it is most fitting that Dr. Yvonne Pennington serve today as the inauguration speaker at the installation of our new president. Dr. Pennington's significant professional resume is a child and adult psychologist, public advocate, and author is made all the more compelling in her role as today's honored speaker, as she is also the parent of a now grown and very successful son with ADHD. In addition to keeping pace with an active pra private practice, speaking calendar, and board service, Yvonne Pennington's professional repertoire includes her appointment as a director of Georgia's groundbreaking Northside Child Development Institute, specializing in ADHD and other learning disabilities. It is my privilege to introduce Dr. Yvonne Pennington to deliver today's inauguration address. Dr. Pennington. This is such a wonderful place. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very impressed. I wish you guys had been here a few decades ago when Ty and I really needed you. Mm. So I stand here today as living proof that one can survive the whirlwind of an ADHD child who jumps off the roof twice. Imagine I'm in the kitchen uh, cooking and out of the corner of my eye I see a large object fall past the picture window and I thought that looked like Ty <laughs> and sure enough I found him out in the bushes thank goodness for shrubbery <laughs> and of course he had his problems with darting into traffic numerous uh, emergency room visits but then at night he was so sweet and cuddly in his jobbies <laughs> that I would forgive him. 
and uh, get ready to take on another day of advocating, refereeing, encouraging, and running interference, and stifling that occasional negative comment that is so, so killing. We as parents, uh, it happens occasionally. We don't mean to do it. What we have to do is apologize and get back to the encouraging mode. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, remember, if we're not rooting for our kids, there are very few of us, very few of people that we can find who will root for them. Of course, this place was founded by parents. Uh, every uh, national association I've been to uh, was first started by parents. Necessity is the mother of invention, of course. Mm. So, we all must sacrifice, of course, mm. for these special needs kids. You give your time, your money, and sometimes even your sanity for the sake of your youngsters. Sometimes they remember to thank us, a lot of times they don't. Early on, I realized that Ty was never going to be a good student. He was too distracted and too impulsive, even though he had a high IQ. Mm. I pinched pennies and gave him private art lessons. He loved it. I had to, of course, give something to his brother, so when his older brother got a private trump trumpet lessons. So, of course, we have to learn to find our kids' strengths, find their passion, find their gifts, and help them find and pursue their dreams. Research in resilience tells us that it only takes one person to believe in a child and she can succeed. Only one, absolutely one. But here, wow, you have a whole village. How wonderful is that? ADHD and learning disabilities often co-occur. It's run in my, both of these are run in my family for generations. And darned if I don't go out, out and find a man to marry and have kids with who reminded me of my brother who had been expelled from school at 15. <laughs> I had an uncle who was expelled from school when he was seven because he kept jumping out of the class window. He was fine out slopping the hogs and plowing the fields, but he could not sit and listen and do dull, boring schoolwork. My Uncle Pete never learned <laughs> to read or write. Mm. Ty would draw and design things and build things for hours, put homework in front of him, and he would fall asleep or get so distracted by everything he couldn't concentrate. So I had to learn early on that I had to cut things down into small chunks, give him frequent breaks, reinforce him with tokens and praise uh, to keep him working, to keep him persevering on assignments and on chores too. Mm. Ty didn't learn to read in school. I taught him at home in second grade. I uh, got some store-bought uh, materials and made some myself. I had had some uh, coursework at my master's level in reading diagnostics and reading uh, remediation. So um, he and I spent three nights a week, every week, in my room, and I graphed his progress. And he loved watching how fast he was learning. Mm. And he did learn to read. It took a lot of time and my energy, time I needed for my graduate work, but we all have, uh, all as parents, have stories of sacrifice and perseverance. Remember, our kids sacrifice and persevere as well. It takes them so much longer to do their schoolwork than an ordinary kid. It's like climbing a mountain for them every day. So the audience participation time. If you're a student 
And of course you've persevered and you've sacrificed. I want you to stand up and pat yourself on the back. Okay, okay students, stand up. Pat yourself on the back. All right. Wonderful. Stay standing. Parents, if you've sacrificed and persevered, and of course you have, if you have a kid here, stand up and pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Wonderful. And we'll all give you a hand. Good for you. If I hadn't intervened, my son Ty would have been expelled from school in second grade. He spent every day that year in the principal's office. I was in grad school at the time, and we lived across the street from the school, and I was over there a lot uh, observing kids and doing case studies. And one day I walked into the principal's office, and of course Ty was there, he was always there. And I said, um, this time I'd really like to observe the worst kid in school. She said, Yvonne, haven't you figured that out yet? And behind her hand, she's pointing at Ty. Mm. Every time the school called, and it was often, I wanted to go hide under the bed. So our task is to educate people, to educate teachers, to educate the public about what learning disabilities and what ADHD is. It's not that they're lazy. It's not that they're doing this on purpose. It's really a brain dysfunction. And the more we find out about learning disabilities, it is a brain difference. Mm. I'll never forget when I told Wynn, Ty's older brother, that what the Ty's behavior was really caused by a disorder. Wynn burst into tears. He said, I've been so mean to him. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. In my psychology textbooks, I started to recognize kids that sounded a whole lot like Ty. Mm. And back then, they were called hyperactive. The name of this disorder has changed names every few years. Um, his pediatrician would not give him medication because his EEG was normal. And back then, you were supposed to have brain damage to have, uh, to have uh, again, ADHD, what it's now called. So it was up to me to develop a program to keep him seated in his desk rather than running around the room wearing his desk. He literally did wear his desk. Okay. Uh, so I hit the books and des uh, designed a program in which he earned a token and praise every 10 seconds. That's how long his attention span was. And I set it up to keep the other kids focused on helping him stay focused rather than entertaining them. The more tokens he got, the longer the recess time was for the whole class. It really changed things. If I hadn't persevered and developed a token economy and rewarded his teachers and baked them cookies, I'm not sure Ty would be a TV star. I knew he was so beaten down from being kicked out of his class every day that I had to give him lots of encouragement. We we'll all have our stories as parents, uh, just like Ty and I, and we're the lucky ones. The kids who found their way to this college are also the lucky ones. The adult outcomes for ADHD are pretty awful. The in incidence of ADHD in the, in the prison population is eight times that in the normal population. The incidence of substance abuse is three times higher in ADHD folks than in the normal population. I think these teens and adults are trying to self-medicate because they've never been diagnosed and never treated and never given appropriate education with proper diagnosis, with proper treatment, and appropriate education, such as in this wonderful place. Our kids can do what they love and love what they do. And here they learn to persevere and to sacrifice, uh, to give up texting their friends or doing video games and stick with 
uh, the classwork and schoolwork. And of course, if they do that, they will succeed. The preparation given at this wonderful place prepares these students to be ready for whatever opportunity comes their way. What a difference compared to most of my male relatives. Here they learn to be their own advocates. Here they have a peer group that understands their struggles. I have a dream that one day every classroom in this country will have the same philosophy, the same attitude, and the same expertise as is here in this wonderful place. I am sure that Dr. Haggerty will enhance the opportunities the students here can count on. We are all so lucky to have found our way here. And you are all so lucky to have snagged such a talented, exceptional man to spearhead your growth in the coming years. And so may it be. Thank you, Dr. Pennington, for your heartfelt remarks. Today's inauguration is noteworthy not solely because we are formally installing a new president. On this day, we also commence the milestone of celebrating the 25th anniversary of the college's founding. The Board of Trustees has envisioned the confluence of these two institutional moments as a fitting ceremonial occasion to introduce two of academia's defining symbolic and ceremonial traditions, the dedication of the inst institutional mace and the bestowal of the presidential chain of office. In both instances, from this occasion onward, these items will be integral to the ceremonial traditions of the college, serving both as symbolic and tangible expressions of the college, our enduring values, and our proud academic standing. It is my privilege to call upon the senior member of the college's faculty, Dr. Terry Ross, to accept the institutional mace on behalf of Beacon College community as presented by Dr. Vincent Zicalella, the college's longest serving member of the Board of Trustees. Among the most enduring of collegiate traditions is the symbolic use of the ceremonial mace as a representation of institutional authority. The Beacon College mace made of oak and bronze is adorned with the institutional seal and the college's motto, illuminating the life abundant. Atop the mace in bronze is a sculpted replica of a torch's flame that is the defining feature of the college's seal. The mace shall now and throughout the college's most promising future express our community's abiding dedication to be a new light on learning for all who seek a beacon education. Dr. Ross, may you and all who may succeed you in your role as senior member of the faculty lead faithfully all academic ceremonies with this traditional symbol of authority and academic purpose. It is my privilege to call upon the senior member of, Beacon Co of the Beacon College staff and administration, Mrs. Kimberly Baggett, to accept on behalf of the Beacon community the chain of office heretofore to be worn by President Haggerty and each of his successors upon their inauguration as president. Presenting the chain of office to Ms. Baggett on behalf of the college fiduciaries, the board of trustees will be Dr. Richard Williams. Dr. Williams, Mrs. Baggett. The chain of office distinguishes the authority, responsibility, and honor associated with the highest ranking official within an academic community. At Beacon College, this executive authority resides in the office of the president. Thus, the chain of office is to be worn by the president of the college as he or she officiates at all academic ceremonies at which regalia are donned, whether on or external, to the Beacon College campus. 
reflecting the symbolic identity of the mace as it pertains to institutional authority. The chain of office symbolizes presidential authority, incorporates the college seal on its medallion with the chain itself inscribed with the names and period of service of the incumbent president's predecessors in office. Ms. Baggett, the symbol of presidential authority, which shall now be placed in the protection of the Board of Trustees, shall heretofore be bestowed upon the president of the college at such time that he or she may be elected by the college trustees and be installed as the president. Thank you, Trustee Williams and Mrs. Baggett. It is my privilege again to invite the Leesburg High School Concert Chorus to entertain and inspire us with their rendition of American Anthem.
Thank you once again, Director Elton and the members of the Leesburg High School Concert Chorus. Mr. Thomas Horgan has enjoyed an accomplished career in public service and higher education, all while raising five children with his wife, Susan. A state senator in the Midwest, he subsequently moved his family to the, New Hamp to the state of New Hampshire to assume the post in which he has capably served for 20 years, that of president of the New Hampshire College and University Council. In this role, President Horgan has been an abiding steward of and advocate for both public and private higher education in the Granite State and nationally. Mr. Horgan is a close friend and respected colleague of our new president, and so it is fitting that he serve to introduce Dr. Haggerty at the time of his installation as third president of Beacon College. It is my distinct privilege to introduce President Thomas R. Horgan. Thank you, Dr. Haggerty, honored guests, and members of the Beacon College community. I'm honored to bring you greetings from the state of New Hampshire and to provide a, be a brief biographical introduction of your new president, Dr. George Haggerty, on this very special occasion. As many of you know, Dr. Haggerty served as president of Franklin Pierce University in New Hampshire for 14 years. And I originally intended to mention that the Granite State is only let letting you borrow Dr. Haggerty. But given our recent winter experience, I'm afraid there's probably a no deposit, no return tag <laughs> sewn into George's robe this afternoon. My wife told me to share that we've had 17 inches of snow this week and now it's raining so it'll put a nice sheen over everything for the next couple months. On behalf of the higher education community in New Hampshire, here in Florida, and across the nation, I offer our collective best wishes to Dr. Haggerty and to his family on the occasion of his inauguration as the third president of Beacon College. Let, let me briefly share with you some of the highlights of Dr. Haggerty's most impressive professional experience. And George called me this morning and said, you don't have to read all of that, Tom. And, and I said, well, we'll see. And, you look pretty comfortable, so we'll just go over this a little, a little bit. So, Dr. Haggerty received his bachelor's degree in international affairs from Stonehill College and his master's and doctoral degrees in administration, planning, and social policy from the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Early in his career, Dr. Haggerty was selected as a postdoctoral fellow at the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. After completing his fellowship, he was appointed to a series of posts in the newly created U.S. Department of Education. Uh, history shows that was sometime in the last century. <laughs> Culminating in his appointment as the Chief of Compliance and Enforcement in the Office of Special Education Programs. As I mentioned earlier, Dr. Haggerty was president of Franklin Pierce University, serving with distinction from 1995 to 2009. In recognition of his many years of leadership and service during a time of significant institutional transformation and growth, Dr. Haggerty was named President Emeritus. A champion of making available the U.S. higher education model to an international audience, Dr. Haggerty followed his presidency by serving as the provost and university professor at Hellenic American University in Athens, Greece. Prior to his tenure at Franklin Pierce, Dr. Haggerty served as the corporate vice president and senior partner at TCI Taylor Haggerty and Associates in Washington, D.C. As an academic, Dr. Haggerty served in both faculty and administrative posts at his alma maters, Stonehill College and Harvard University. His teaching, research, and writing were focused on government, education policy, and finance, and management. Additionally, Dr. Haggerty's community board service reflects a continuing commitment to education, public service, and institutional accountability. Prominent among his governing board service was his election as chair of the board of directors of the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, chair of the President's Council of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. He served on the board of the American Council on Education and was appointed to the Council's Commission on Leadership and Institutional Effectiveness. Dr. Haggerty also served a four-year appointment as a member of the Board of Trustees of Tuition Plan, Inc., the national prepaid tuition program for private colleges and universities. And not insignificantly, at least to me, 
He served as chair of the New Hampshire College and University Council and Campus Compact for New Hampshire. As all of you know, these are indeed interesting, exciting, and yes, some might even say challenging times for higher education here in Florida, throughout the nation, and across the globe. It is a time of wonderful opportunities and sometimes seemingly overwhelming challenges. You will unquestionably be well served by the visionary leadership and dedication of Dr. Haggerty. Without question, Beacon College is a very special institution with a very special spirit. It is a spirit rooted in the potential of every student. Beacon College is a critically important thread in the diverse tapestry of our nation's higher education community. Its unique essence has been masterfully captured in the selection of your new president. Dr. Haggerty is uniquely prepared to take on the challenges of a small private presidency, for he understands the need to honor Beacon's past while simultaneously inspiring its creative future to encourage discourse while acting decisively, to respect the wide array of needs of various campus constituencies while uniting the institution as a whole, and to do all this and more with a leader's spirit and a collaborative heart. The days ahead are full of great promise and new adventures for this institution, rooted in the values of being curious, of listening to diverse voices, and in striving for ethical excellence. You are indeed fortunate to have a leader who has the obvious energy, vision, and commitment to lead Beacon to the next level of accomplishment and prominence. Dr. Haggerty, on behalf of your colleagues in New Hampshire, here in Florida, and across the entire higher education landscape, please accept our sincere congratulations and deep confidence that your commitment, leader spirit, an inspiring vision will guide and sustain all of you in the important work you have ahead. Thank you. Thank you, President Horgan. With the introductions made and the words of greeting, acknowledgement, and inspiration delivered so eloquently, it is now my honor to call upon Chair Eileen Maranakis to formally install Beacon College's third president Dr. George J. Haggerty. Chair Maranakis and Dr. Haggerty, would you please step forward to the podium? President Haggerty, it is my great honor to officially welcome you today as the third president of Beacon College. All here witnessing your installation draw inspiration from your standing commitment to Beacon's singular mission and are energized by your vision for the future. Therefore, by the authority vested in me by law, and our Board of Trustees, I hereby invest you, George J. Haggerty, with all the rights, privileges, and duties that pertain to this office. It is with great enthusiasm that I present you with the chain of office and charge you with the responsibilities to fulfill its obligations to the best of your ability. It is now my high honor to call upon our newly installed Chief Executive, the third President of Beacon College, to address us in response. Dr. Haggerty, the podium is yours. Madam Chair, members of the Board of Trustees, beloved family, honored friends and guests, and most especially, dear members of the Beacon College community. It is my honor to accept this symbol of office and to become the third president of Beacon College. Now, I just read a book, uh, which was a wonderful book, and I, I commend it to you 
It's by Malcolm Gladwell, and it's called David and Goliath. And it's about the advantages of being disadvantaged and the disadvantages of being ad advantaged. And now I'm going to give you a tangible expression of this. With my visual imp impairment, uh, we use large print. This was the speech I was going to deliver. <laughs> but it is very hot in this tent, or at least it is up here. And I thought I heard a rumble of thunder. So this is the speech that I am going to deliver. You know, the, 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 the truth of the matter is that I know that I'm the only one standing between us and a very nice reception. So it, that's a very difficult thing to do. But I'm very grateful to be the new president. And I come here standing on some very broad shoulders. And those shoulders have defined how I live my life, what I've done, the values that I have. And this community is a lot like me. It stood on some very, very broad shoulders as well. And it's important for me to recognize that I am one piece of the story. And the story which came to this institution over the course of 25 years is an extraordinary one. Let me just tell you what impressed me. In 1989, when this institution was founded, nobody in their right mind would start a private college. Higher education, particularly private higher education, was in a state of flux. There was great uncertainty. And yet, what happened here is extraordinary. A group of parents got together. And why do I find that particularly extraordinary? In 1978, when I was with the US Department of Education, I was part of the regulatory team that was working on a law called the Education for All Handicapped Children Act. And it was the, the, landmark, the landmark statute for special education. And we were particularly concerned about the K through 12 population. But we also knew that there was an element of these students who could achieve very well if given an appropriate post-secondary education, a college education. But our focus was on K through 12. And we were lucky in 1975 to have that law passed. And so we worked and worked and worked, but it always sat in our, it stood in our mind. Just 10 years later, a group of parents took it upon themselves and did something that we knew had to happen. We were certain it had to happen. But if you ask me, I thought it would probably be a quarter of a century before this could ever be a reality. And there are some very, very broad shoulders. And um, at, the, at the risk of embarrassment and my later admonishment for doing this, there are six people on the stage today who had those broad shoulders, who did the tenacious things, who had the vision, who sacrificed. And I would like for them individually to stand and as a group we could uh, ag acknowledge them. Deborah Broadbeck, our President Emeritus, could you please stand? <laughs> Marsha. Marsha Glines, the first president of Beacon College. Eileen Maranakis, who's been our chair, thankfully. Dr. Vincent Zicalella, who's been with us for 20 years, the longest serving trustee. 
Sam Battaglia, who served as a chair. And another long member, a uh, long serving member of the Board of Trustees, Richard Williams. Let's talk just a second about what they've done. It is um, disturbing to me that if you take a look at the national graduation rates for students with learning disabilities and ADHD, you're going to find that there's a six-year graduation rate of 21 percent. Beacon College, in the model that was developed quietly, tenaciously, over the course of the past 25 years, have, has a four-year graduation rate of 76 percent. We are a liberal arts institution that recognizes that our students learn differently. And our focus, the focus of the faculty and the staff, the people who work all around this campus, educators all, is on the advancement of these students and the advancement of their ambitions and their dreams. And so I can tell you as a candidate, I really wasn't sure that the numbers I was given were accurate because I know what mainstream higher education has as a, as a record. But an 82% retention rate and an 81% employment and graduate study rate is absolutely incredible. And I want to congratulate all that have been involved in that. Now, if you were in my position, as the new president of Beacon College, how would you act? Boldly, boldly, because this is an institution with an extraordinary legacy in just 25 years. But our ambitions must be to take the Beacon model to new heights, to new students, and the institution at the winter meeting uh, two weeks ago, I brought to the Board of Trustees a, a master plan, let's call it. Board may have not thought it was so masterful, but it was a master plan. <laughs> and it took a look at Beacon over the course of the next 10 years, as I envisioned it from my time as a candidate in my early presidency. You know, I've been listening. Good presidents, I think, if they're going to be successful and, and, and live long in the position, if you know what I mean, you, you've got to listen. You've got to listen as much as you speak. And so I listened. And I found an institution which is inspired by its past, but has a clear understanding of the present and where it's going. And so the plan that uh, I brought to the board and which they have approved in concept has a whole host of uh, projects that will incrementally develop over time. They're not all going to be done at once, but over 10 years, I think that this is where this institution is going to go. And I believe that this population of students, of undergraduate students, is going to be a, a grow from 185 and over a 10-year period grow to a very healthy group of undergraduates at 400 to 450 students. But to do that, we know that we need to develop facilities and programs and services that meet the needs not of today, but of the future. And so, I'm going to be introducing this to the, to the community over the course of the next several months, but don't be surprised if Main Street looks a little different. Don't be surprised if you see a student center and housing that's centralized and that meets not only 
the educational needs, but the service needs and the socializing needs and the fitness needs of, of students. And don't be surprised if you see that beautiful, iconic rail railway station. It was Leesburg's railway station. And I know it's going to be brick, all right? Everybody, it's going to be brick. Don't be surprised if you see that transformed for our academic use and for the use of the public because it is a glorious building. I believe it can be an iconic building for Beacon as well as it can be for the people of Leesburg. So we have many plans, but you know, what has to stay the same is what happens in, in the heart. You know, things that matter, things that matter are really held in the hand but always held in the heart, the things that matter. And so what matters here? What matters here in a high-tech world, we are very high touch. And that's an important feature of this close-knit community and it cannot change and it will not change. But it's the spirit that's the most important for our graduates as individuals and for our community as a collective. It's the spirit. There was this uh, wonderful author, you may have heard of her, her name was Eudora Welty. Eudora Welty came from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, she's one of my favorites. She spent almost all of her life in Jackson, Mississippi. She was fairly reclusive. And, um, but she won the Pulitzer Prize in 1973 for a magnificent book called The Optimist's Daughter. And uh, about 10 years later, she wrote this book, which was called One Writer's Beginning. And it's the most influential book, I think, if you think of books, and you know, I'm 61 years old, so you've read a lot of books. And if you think of the most, if I think of the most influential book in my life, One Writer's Beginning is certainly in the top three but it's what she said at the end, what she said at the end of this book. A person who lived in Jackson, Mississippi, who had spent all her life there, won the Pulitzer Prize. She said, you see, I have lived a sheltered life, but a sheltered life can be a daring life as well. For all serious daring starts from within. All serious daring starts from within. And so, what do I wish, and what does this faculty wish, and what, do the what does the board wish, what do all who love Beacon wish? That's that we give you the opportunity and that we nurture you so that you can live daring lives. So to the students, I wish you daring lives. And to all of you, thank you for this honor. Thank you, President Haggerty. We welcome you, your vision, and the course upon which we have embarked. This has been a wonderful afternoon of pomp and circumstance, and there's much more celebration in store. As you're aware, there's a wonderful reception awaiting your presence immediately following the benediction and procession. At the conclusion of the benediction by Rabbi Eberly, I will formally close these formal proceedings. We ask that at that time you remain in your seats until the platform and processional parties and regalia have processed out of the tent. At that time you can begin exiting the ceremonial area and proceed to the adjacent area prepared for the reception. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated and will ensure a smooth transition to the next celebratory venue and event. Thank you in advance. It is now my distinct privilege to welcome Rabbi Rose Eberly from the Temple Shalom in Oxford to offer our benediction. Rabbi Eberly. Good afternoon, everyone. 
We are blessed to be here today to acknowledge and honor the mission and ideals of Beacon College. So friends, let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, our guardian and teacher, guide us in the ways of righteousness, justice, and compassion. Grant us vision and courage. Where we find ignorance and superstition, help us bring enlightenment and knowledge. Where we find prejudice and hatred, help us to cultivate acceptance and love. Where we find fear and suspicion, let us encourage confidence and trust. Bless us, O oh God. Help each of us to meet the end of each and every day, certain in the knowledge that we tried our very best, that we used our gifts and our talents, which you have bestowed upon us, for the common good, and that we have treated each person we have encountered with compassion and dignity. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Eberly. This has been a wonderful and certainly historic celebration on the Beacon College campus today. We look forward to your joining us next door to continue the recognition and the special moment for Beacon College. I ask that the platform party and all in attendance to please rise. This inauguration ceremony is now concluded. Dr. Ross would you secure the mace and lead the platform party out.